Hey friends, it's Paula. Welcome to Relatively Refined. I've got a jam-packed video for you today. I'm going to take you throughout my day, starting with a crock-pot meal that will get going, and then we're going to hit the town where I'll take you to an adorable local shop and share with you some of the beautiful little things I picked up while there. I've got a Bath and Body Works haul for you and who knows what else. We're going to need that cup of coffee to get us through the day. So go ahead and pour yourself one. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up and join the Relatively Refined YouTube family. I thought today would be the perfect day to do some fall things. I'm going to get us started with a crock pot fettuccine alfredo. And then I've got some bananas over there I need to use up. And I think I'll turn those into either banana bread or banana muffins. I'm not sure yet. So let's go ahead and get this crock pot fettuccine alfredo started. But first I'm gonna have a little sip of my coffee. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add my chicken breasts to the crock pot. It calls for four, this is five, but um, one is real small. There we go. Can you hear those dogs in there? They're just going crazy. Um, all right, let me bring you in a little bit closer here. And then I'm going to add half a cup, I mean, half a stick of butter cut into pieces. So I will just put that butter round on top of the chicken. And it calls for a block of cream cheese, also cut into pieces. Let's put that in here. Phoebe. Then I'm gonna add a cup of chicken broth. of heavy whipping cream. Salt and pepper. That's just sort of to taste and I kind of just eyeball this. A little bit of salt. And I'll link the recipe down below. I got this online. I can't remember the actual name of the uh, website that the recipe's from, but I will put the link down below. And then a pinch of Italian seasoning. All right, and that is it. I'm going to put my crock pot top on and turn it on low and let that sit for about four hours and then we'll come back and check on it. Well, it's a beautiful, beautiful day out today. So I'm gonna take advantage of this gorgeous weather and run a few errands, including a stop at Goodwill, not to shop, but to drop off. I have been doing some clearing and decluttering in my house and I've got a car load of stuff to take today and I had one yesterday. So we're gonna head out and I'm gonna take you with me. So come on, let's go. I'm taking you to the French Mercantile, which is an absolutely beautiful little shop in Somerville, South Carolina. It has an incredible assortment of home decor, candles, dried florals, baskets, breadboards, all kinds of things, all French inspired and from France. I'm just going to let you take a look at some of the footage I took in the interior of the store and just feast your eyes on how beautiful it is. 
The displays are so gorgeous. I just love to go in there and, and look around. Even if you don't get anything, it's just a delightful experience for the senses. It's also a wonderful place to pick up a great hostess gift, a little love gift, just something to let somebody know I'm thinking of you. You really can't go wrong. I hope you enjoy this footage. And if you are local or in the area ever, please do stop in and let them know that Relatively Refined sent you. I cannot say enough good things about this adorable little store. All right, I am home now from doing my errands and I have my bag of goodies from the French Mercantile and I thought I would just unpack them and let you see what I picked up at that adorable little shop. A lot of the things that I picked up were actually 60% off, so I happened to hit it on a great day. So let me adjust the camera and I'll show you what I picked up there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and unpack the bag. And the first thing I got was this really um, cute little sphere made out of twigs or branches. And it's just really a decorative piece. I just thought it would add some nice texture to a tray or to a display. And this was 60% off as well. And I'll have to look at my receipt to see exactly what I paid for, but it was just a dollar or two. Then I also picked up these bingo cards. And again, I have no idea what I'm going to do with them, but they were $2. And I just think in a display, um, just kind of for a decorative accent, they'll be really cute. So some bingo cards. They have the most amazing handmade French soaps. This was uh, not on sale, but this is lemon verbena soap. It smells wonderful. And it's French soap from Marseille. And it's packaged in these little paper bags with their logo on and everything is just so French there and just the attention to detail is wonderful. It's a special experience just going in and shopping. Um, so there was the soap. Then, let me see, some of these are wrapped up with the little label for the store. I'm gonna open this up. I got, this is, oh, I know this is a candlestick holder. Obviously I got a pair of these, but they are a handmade, pottery candlestick holder. And I just think they're lovely, a wonderful neutral color. It has that hand thrown look. They were originally $14 each. So $1.40, $2.80, So, you know, $11, $12 for the pair. I really thought they were beautiful. So I got two of those and I got another set of candlestick holders. They were also 60% off and they are also uh, pottery and they look very handmade, hand thrown. And again, just a wonderful neutral color. Same thing, they were um, $6 each, so $12 for the pair. I actually got two pair of these because they'd make a great gift for somebody. Either one of my sisters I think would love these candlestick holders. So I could not resist. So I got four of these. And let's see, these are just the rest of them. And then I think the last thing that I got, let me just show you. And this was 20% off is this gorgeous velvet pumpkin. And it has such a realistic looking stem. If you can see that. I think I'm really drawn to pumpkin stems. I mean, I'm picky about the stem of my pumpkin. Even when I buy pumpkins, you know, at the pumpkin patch that are real pumpkins, I'm picky about what the stem looks like. And I just love the shape of the stem and this gorgeous kind of champagne colored velvet. It's soft and it's just a beautiful size. So this was kind of a splurge. Um, it was $30 uh, regularly and it was 20% off. So it was $24. And I just think it's absolutely beautiful. So that is my little haul from the French Mercantile. It's a darling shop. And if you're in the, the area, I would encourage you to stop in. It's just precious. And the stuff they have in there is very European. It's very French. And it's just a fun experience to go in and look around. And you'd be supporting a local business. So that's my little haul. 
All right, well, this has been cooking about three and a half hours. And so it says to shred the chicken. Let's see if it's easily shreddable. Yes, so I'm gonna take this chicken out, put it on this plate and just shred it up. Okay, I've got all my chicken shredded and I'm going to add it back in to the crock pot. Give that a good stir. And then I'm gonna add in some rigatoni noodles. Probably about half of this box. Calls for about two cups of noodles. So I'm gonna add those in. I'm gonna give this a good stir. And I'm gonna put my top back on and let it cook for probably another couple of hours. I actually forgot to add that um, when you stir the noodles in, you add about, it says four ounces. I put a, probably five, about half of this container of shredded Parmesan cheese. So I put that in and I stirred that around. So we've got the noodles and the Parmesan cheese in there. And then I'm gonna cover this and put it back on until the noodles are cooked through and the cheese is all melty. All right, well, the Alfredo is done. The noodles are cooked and it looks delicious. I did add a few things that are not in the recipe. So I added probably a tablespoon or so of apple cider vinegar, maybe a tablespoon and a half. And then I also added a pinch of nutmeg to it. I don't know, I always put nutmeg in my things that have cream sauces and it just adds a little bit. Now you wanna be very, very careful with nutmeg because it's a strong flavor. So you just need to add a pinch, but it really makes a great difference. And there it is. And we will have that for supper tonight. Looks delicious. When I came home from running my errands today, my Bath and Body Works order had come in. So let me just take a look at this. I ordered several candles at their 50% off candle sale. I got fresh balsam. I think I got two of those. I will see, let's see. This is leaves. Two leaves. Oh, fresh balsam. That's yeah. I did get two of those. Let's see, there's that one. Sweet cinnamon pumpkin. I got two of those. One I'm already burning. And the perfect Christmas, which I've never tried before. And then I got this enchanted candy potion body wash for my daughter because she loves that. So that was an exciting little surprise on the front steps. Okay, I'm going to make my banana muffins now. You can hear the guy outside mowing our lawn right now. So this recipe is from my Better Homes and Gardens cookbook. This is a great cookbook. It has all kind of your basic recipes. So we're gonna start with one and three quarters cups of flour. I've got a half a teaspoon of salt and two teaspoons of baking powder. You have a half a cup, or I think actually a quarter cup of sugar. I'm gonna just give this a little stir to mix those dry ingredients together. Then I've got a third of a cup of oil. A 
have a half a cup of milk and I'm using um, oat milk because that's all we had. So let's hope. <laughs> and we need one egg beaten. Look at these beautiful eggs. They're blue. They're the Happy Egg brand. And I just love these eggs. So I'm gonna crack that egg in there. And then I'm just gonna do a little stir around to lightly beat it. The color of these eggs is incredible. Look at that yolk, it's almost orange. It's so incredible. Add that in. And then I'm gonna add my mashed bananas. And this is a cup of bananas mashed, ripe bananas mashed, which is about two large bananas. Let me give this a good stir. Okay, I've got my batter all stirred up and I'm going to fill my muffin cups right here. I've got my oven preheating to 400 degrees and the Muffin tin is lined with these silicone baking cups. I got these off of Amazon and they're fantastic. I'll, I'll link them below if I can find them. They were not expensive and they work great. So let me go ahead and fill my muffin. I'm gonna use my little quarter cup scoop to fill my muffin cups. I don't have a big enough little scooper or I would use that you know, like an ice cream type scooper. We have a little one for cookies, but not one for the muffins. So let me go ahead and fill these muffin cups. And I'll get this last one in this muffin pan. And then when that oven is preheated, we'll get these into the oven. Okay, the muffins are done, the banana muffins. They look delicious. It made 16 muffins. I filled the muffin cups up uh, with a quarter cup of batter and it made 16. I cannot wait to dig in. They smell delicious. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to dip the muffin into some melted butter. Just dip it in and then bring it over here and I have some cinnamon, sugar, and a little tiny bit of nutmeg. And I'm gonna dip it in that. I think that will be delicious. Here's the finished product. These banana muffins were super easy to make. They used up some of my bananas that were going to go bad, and I'm sure they will be delicious with a cup of afternoon tea. Perfect for a fall afternoon. Thanks so much for joining me today. My sisters and I truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you liked this vlog style of video, be sure to let us know in the comments below and give us a big thumbs up. That allows us to share our video with others who may be interested in the same type of content. On the screen, you will find a couple more videos by Relatively Refined that I think you'll enjoy. Take care everyone, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.